The critical region is an area which contains a outcomes that are very unlikely to occur when the null is true, b outcomes that are very likely to occur when the null is true, c outcomes that are very unlikely to occur regardless of whether the null is true or not, d outcomes that are very likely to occur regardless of whether the null is true or not. Okay, so probably the best way to deal with this would be to draw a critical region. Now often in these questions when I draw a critical region what I like to do is I like to assume we're dealing with a one-tailed test. A one-tailed test is when you are perhaps checking to see whether or not the mean is increased. So let's say that uh, my before treatment mean is 60. So an increase would be showing me an alternate or research hypothesis where the mean is greater than 60. And the null hypothesis would then be that uh, it's either less than or equals to 60. This would be covering the idea that there is no effect and my alternate hypothesis is the one that says that there is an effect. Okay, so if I'm dealing with this kind of an investigation where I'm looking for an increase, then my critical region is all in the upper tail. In other words, I'm not dividing it amongst the two tails. All of my critical region is in the one tail. So let's say I have a typical significance level of 5%. That means that I've just shaded in the upper 5% of my distribution and any sample values that fall beyond this boundary or above will lead me to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so have a look at uh, what it is that I've done here. I've shaded in, like I said, this is a typical alpha value. I've shaded in the upper 5% the most extreme 5%. It's at the edge. It's where my frequencies drop down. I don't have a high frequency of results landing there. So this, whatever lands here, whichever samples this uh, is giving me the results of, these are not very likely to occur. So I can rule out B. And I think I can also rule out D. It also talks about very likely to, to occur. But it's only very likely to occur if I expect that this value right here, whatever my null hypothesis says, that my untreated population mean is the true mean. Because for all I know, let's say, let me clean this up a little bit. If the, if the untreated mean is 60, then I'm only going to see values happening over here in the rejection region or the critical region very rarely when the true mean is actually 60. So if the null hypothesis is true that there was no effect, there was no increasing effect, you wouldn't expect, you would not expect a lot of samples to land up here. So that's why they say when the null is true. If on the other hand, let's say that the null was false, Let's say that the treatment does increase scores. So that would mean that the true mean is not 60. It's going to be somewhere higher. Perhaps there's going to be a peak here, in which case these would not be unlikely to occur. These would actually be likely. We would expect to see if there's an increasing effect. Um, if the treatment does increase scores, we would expect to see more larger scores. So it's important that they say here that the null when the null is true. So these are unlikely to occur when the null is true. That means that if you actually get a result that lands in your critical region, you can say, well, that was unlikely to happen if the null was true, so maybe the null is not true. Maybe I should reject the null and say that there was an effect. There was an increasing effect. That's effectively how the thinking or the logic behind a hypothesis test goes. So our answer here is going to be A, because we're looking at, in the critical region at unlikely scores or unlikely sample results. And it is important that we have a look at whether or not the null hypothesis is true. We're not going to say that it's regardless of whether or not the null is true.